Hi, this is Andreas from Anything But iPod. Uh, I'm back with another video that goes with my written review of the Arcos 5 internet tablet on our website. Uh, now I want to show you some of the applications that you can get on this device because as you know this device runs Android which means that it has access to pretty much any app that will run on an Android device. Uh, there are some limitations that I'll get to later but basically as long as you can get the installation file which is a .apk file you can run it on the device. Uh, by default you have uh, just a few applications on here, most of them with bloatware to put it frankly. You have uh, an app store that is called AppSlib with uh, only some a few free applications. I'm not going to go into that because that application, that app store application, is so horribly unstable that it'll most likely crush the entire device, and I don't have time for that right now. Okay, it's asking me to connect the charger. I know I'm low on battery, but hopefully it'll last 10 minutes. So. Uh, you'd want to install additional app stores and there are several free ones out there but the most noticeable one is the actual Google Marketplace which isn't included on this device by default so you have to install it using a uh, APK file that I linked to in my review I think I did anyways it's a fairly simple process you just in, uh, get it installed and then you have access to Still only free applications, but uh, at least you have a lot of more applications than you would using the internal or the included app store. And this doesn't uh, hang as much as either, so... Uh, there are some nice uh, applications from major companies here, such as Spotify and Photoshop and uh, Ustream, Google Listen, so on. But other than that, you'll mostly find the uh, ad-supported version, so paid uh, applications, uh, trial software and so on, so you'll most likely, if you if you install a lot of applications and games and such, you'll come across a lot of ads in the apps, because there's no way to buy apps on this device as of yet. At least not on this firmware, uh, on a previous uh, alpha or beta firmware, there was a hack to enable it, but it, it isn't on this current firmware release, so hopefully they'll include it in the future. So let's uh, take a look at some of the most notable, noticeable applications, some of the most useful ones. Twidroid is actually one of the few useful included applications. It's a Twitter client, uh, so if you're on Twitter, it will uh, it'll show you your tweets and let you reply and so on. And as with every application, it works in portrait and landscape. It switches automatically using the built-in accelerometer. And you also have Facebook, which is, uh, as you can see, it doesn't really utilize the entire screen resolution because even though this is Android 1.6 and it does support the screen resolution, most of the big uh, Android phones like the Droid and so on, they with the, that has the same res or more or less the same resolution as the Arcos, weren't released uh, until uh, Android version 2.0. So applications that use this resolution to its fullest won't be. Uh, you won't find them for this version of Android so hopefully in the future if or when they update to 2.0 you'll have a lot more applications that uh, actually use the resolution of the device instead of just supporting it so uh, basically Facebook you know Facebook and then you have uh, the browser this is of course included you can also um, also um, install additional browsers if you want to but uh, this one works pretty well. Let's go to anything but iPod. It loads pretty fast. It doesn't support flash and all that stuff you'd want from a laptop. But uh, for normal web browsing it'll do. It has some... If you load big websites like this one it takes a few seconds but it isn't too bad 
as you can see it uh, actually leaves some space out here uh, the auto fit uh, feature doesn't actually uh, actually work that well so you have to basically zoom in and out to get it to fit to the screen correctly so uh, it works pretty decently uh, I'm using a stylus right now because as I said in my video with the resistor versus capacitive touchscreen it's, it's a pain in the ass to scroll using your finger because you have to press down so hard you get uh, friction at least compared to a capacitive touchscreen but refer, refer to my other video to see what I'm talking about with that so that's the browser of course you can also use this in portrait <laughs> and it still doesn't auto fit and it actually removed the zoom keys as well so it's something of a mess right there let's go back to the desktop and uh, e-reader is one of the applications that uh, is quite useful on this device it's, uh, it uh, basically takes your books from uh, ereader.com or fictionwise and lets you um, those are of course copy protected books so uh, you need this this applic you need a e-reader application to read them you can't just use any generic ebook application you need the specific ereader.com application to read your ereader.com books there are other e-reader or other ebook applications for android that will read uh, unprotected files but uh I don't mind paying for content uh, as long as it actually works instead of having to dig through pirate sites to find this and that so this is one of the books I'm should have been reading so of course this is best read in uh, portrait mode and it switches pretty nicely and you can also set um, various things like font settings I'm not blind so I don't need I can deal with it, say 12 and you have the ebook application right there it's actually caching files right now so it might be slow but it's actually not so let's get through the here's the actual book so if you turn down the backlight and uh, just use it as a casual reader it actually works pretty nicely I don't have any problems myself with reading on an LCD but I know some people prefer e-ink as it's more paper like but um, it's a very uh, this is one of the applications that I personally think are most useful on this device and also we have um, Spotify which I don't which I haven't uh, installed after I upgraded the firmware because my premium subscription ran out I did a review of Spotify uh, on the site uh, a couple of months ago so if you if you go to that review you can see a video that also shows it off on this device so Spotify basically lets you pay a certain amount of money each month uh, it depends on your country and then you have access to uh, millions of songs and you can download them uh, over Wi-Fi uh, something called offline mode and uh, basically it's uh, like uh, Rhapsody or something like that in the US it's a nice feature or a nice application if you have if you listen to a lot of music and don't want to pay or and want to be legal without having to pay for each and every song uh, 